What is going on guys? Wiser here. I am bringing you the next Theorycraft base building series video um, that we, uh, me and Kadic, uh were rolling out here. And I am here actually with Kadic. How's it going, man? It's going good, man. Thanks. Beautiful, beautiful. So um, what we've decided to do now is break base building down into sections so we can have um, a bunch of smaller length videos uh, just focusing on really uh, certain basics of base building. So this uh, session we have decided to focus on uh, chamber sizing, compartment sizing, like uh, how to build your queen chamber, um, how to know what she is going to do, and then kind of how to build your compartments to proper sizing surrounding that. So uh, let's just hop over and see the base that Chaotic has built for us. Uh, let's see, as you can see on this Twidla, uh, we really didn't focus too much on any of the defenses. Uh, everything's on the outside. Um, but what this base does exemplify very well is the chamber sizes. Uh, so, uh, Kadik, tell me a little bit about uh, what you were thinking when, when you kind of laid down these walls and, and what you were thinking when you built this. Okay, so as I stated in, pre in the previous video, uh, the main thing you would want to protect in your base is of course the Archer Queen. And the whole base design is um, revolves around her, basically. <laughs> She's a woman and she wants the attention, basically. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and the reason being is, as we all know, that if she lives, your raid has a very, very slim chance of actually succeeding and getting the three star. So, the idea is protect her as well as you can without giving up too much. And uh, this base uh, pretty much does that uh, in the sense that um, the Archer Queen will jump no further than, than three walls. If there's three spaces between her and a wall, she will not jump over it. Mm -hmm. So this base has that perfectly exemplified everywhere between her and the next wall is at, uh, is at least three spaces. Um, and on the other side, uh, compartment-wise, uh, you can see right here, uh, between this mortar and uh, air defense, that wall has nine spaces. And this is specifically to counter earthquakes. So if you're designing a base, um, first... Uh, Pay attention to those uh, two details. So nine, nine spaces, I mean, even eight spaces will, will prevent a jump, but nine spaces and you are clear from jumps, from earthquakes. So really where that kind of leaves it is the only potential ways you could get to this enemy Archer Queen with just one jump and a wall breaker and some wall breakers, uh, it kind of kind of curbs off right here. Um, you know, you break you break these walls, you'd have to jump in here, or same thing on the other side. Now, this base is symmetrical. This base does not follow some of the rules that we spoke about in the introductory video. Uh, but again, we did, uh, this base was literally just built uh, to show you the examples um, and show you exactly what we're talking about here. So, um, yes. Now, uh, a couple things. One thing that you mentioned, which was great, uh, um, was back to one of our basic rules, which is give up the least for the most, right? Because you, gen like you said, if the Archer Queen lives, it doesn't really matter what kind of attack you're going to bring. It's pro it has an extremely high chance of failure. So with that being yes. said, you know the attacker is going to have to somehow go for your queen, right? So uh, some things that you have are, that are good are uh, obviously you know this bomb set is down there, that bomb is down there. Um, so you know those bombs are going to be safe from any kill squad trying to get your queen, um, at least respectively, right? Uh, there is possible ways, but you're forcing the attacker to make some decisions. You're forcing him to, to make a double jump kind of play. You're forcing him to either just leave the bombs and deal with them in another fashion. Um, because realistically, they're, from you know this, I guess, 10 o'clock position in an arc all the way around, that top section is the only potential ways that you could just bring a kill squad in with using only one jump uh, and get the queen. Yes. So that's, that's good. That's a huge success because now you, now you know that the rest of this base on the bottom side is going to be untouched by the kill squad and it's going to have to be taken out by balloons or uh, hogs or something. Uh, and now 
with those bombs down there that that's that's just adding a huge factor to the to the attacker's plan right because he, he's gonna have to send in some suicide hogs or something to get rid of that double giant bomb or he's gonna make bacon and it's it's gg so um yeah so some great examples here and so with uh protecting your queen there's uh, basically five ways you need to protect her and uh, three are from the outside and two are from the inside so one of the insights we already spoke about, which is mainly um, the kill squad cr coming from the opposite uh, side of the base. So imagine coming from the south, for example. You're forcing now a jump here and a jump over there, or like this from the four o'clock position, uh, still a double jump. So that's one way to protect her, basically. Um, the other way from the inside is a bit more of a tricky one. Uh, imagine this expo being um, an air defense, which is a which is a good way to protect her from the outside. Uh, we'll talk about that later uh, against dragons. But if you have a lava hound in the CC, the enemy can just drop four lightnings over her and the air defense and just ignore her altogether, and just pretty much uh, overwhelm the base with lava hounds and uh, mm -hmm. loons. They don't have to worry about what's in the clan castle. If nope. they can take out one air defense and the archer queen with lightnings, then that's going to leave them a quad lalo for the rest of your base. And basically, it, yes, it's uh, it's not. I've seen good. it happen in a scrim. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Actually, it's, sad as it is, I was going to say as sad as it is to say, in my in one of my in my other clan, I just got quad laloed. The guy <laughs> didn't even take out my my archer queen, but she's only level ten or eleven. <laughs> So she just didn't have enough firepower to take down the balloons, and he barely got the three star. I was pretty upset by it, but <laughs> that's a that's a whole nother discussion to be had. Um, so yeah, some really good things here, right? Because you know this queen is gonna stay inside these walls; she's not going anywhere, right? So what are some options uh, as an attacker uh, to take out that queen? We maybe we can go through some of those outside factors. Yeah. So we talked about the inside, and now the outside is uh, the most important thing. Uh, there's basically three ways to get to the Archer Queen um, that are generally generally used, um, which are the King Swap, basically, uh, with or without a Golem. Um, just imagine coming in from this side with a Golem, and placing a jump spell here, and then dropping your King behind it after funneling a bit, which is possible. Um, but in that case, you're forcing a jump, you're forcing uh, the king to suicide himself there, and a golem, which is a huge investment just to get to her, which is a win from a builder's perspective. And uh, not only that, this cannon over here uh, is placed in this case specifically uh, to lure a golem over there. So, yeah, you're, basi you're forced to go from the other side as well. Yep. Um, so that basically covers the king. Um, anything else to add on that part? Um, no, I, I would like to say, uh, like this cannon you, you said specifically, that that's a great little trick. Um, and again, we're gonna in our pathing episode, we'll cover golem pathing a little bit, uh, and the, the the amount of spaces defenses need to be from where you think someone's gonna try and drop a golem to come in here. Um, but if that golem gets yanked over to that cannon, well, you're still gonna have to move forward over that jump. So once you drop your king, he's your king's gonna go down very fast. He probably he's still exposed will, to everything. He probably still will get the queen. However, he's not going to get anything else. And then all these defenses are going to start shooting at, at everything else that you have there, right? Um, so so that's, a great, that's a great point. Uh, like, this is, a, this is a really solid solid queen chamber because the attacker is just limited in what, what he can do to, to get that queen down. Yep. So the second thing you need to keep track of when building an archer queen chamber... Um, this I see a lot, is um, a wall, just a single wall being out here or even closer to the Archer Queen. Uh, her range is just on top of this wall or just beyond it at the furthest. Yep. Uh, imagine this wall being uh, halfway here. That would allow an Archer Queen, um, when she's shooting over that wall, 
to come in uh, deeper. She, she would be standing here, imagine at the Elixir storage, and would be in range of your Archer Queen. Yep. So with a couple of healers and a rage spell, she would take out your queen and basically get all of these defenses for free as well. Yeah. So when designing the Archer Queen chamber, keep that queen walk in mind and make sure that she can't easily get to her. And uh, so, so imagine, I gotta draw a circle here. Where's my shapes? So let's say, oh, it's gotta be wider. <clears throat> uh, let's do this one. So we're saying, oh, such a bad, I'm so bad at making circles, it's not even <laughs> funny. It's probably, probably comes out something like, like that. <laughs> that. That could be better, but, um, so we're going right along the edge of that wall. So what Cad's saying here, if that wall was a little bit shorter, and a queen walk came up in there, as soon as she walks into that circle and the defensive queen takes a shot at her, she's going to lock right onto it. And with healers on her back, your defensive queen doesn't stand a chance, no matter how many, I mean, in this specific example, she might have a little too much on her to survive, but she rages it up. You drop a rage, a rage spell on the healers and the queen at that point, and your arch queen's dead due to that walk, and she's going to finish off the rest of that. Yep, either that or even just the Archer Queen ability would be enough. Or just the ability, yeah, exactly. Yep. Right, Rage her up and uh, take her down. Even if she kind of dies at that point, that's a huge trade, right? Queen for Queen that's a massive a few trade. healers. Yep, absolutely. And one other point um, on the Archer Queen walk topic. Uh, what I see usually these days is that people have walls like this. Uh, they're not completely filling out the outside uh, with walls. Now... This does cost an extra investment of like four or five walls to get to get the wall all around her, but uh, even this design that's fairly popular right now uh, allows an archer queen to walk in there and take a shot at the um, defending yeah. queen Cause because the range is out there. Yeah, that little circle right there, she can. It's a little nook. She just will eventually walk into that nook to to, to target everything in the queen chamber. And again, she'll step right into that Archer Queen pad range and uh, and uh, take down and the take queen. Route. Yeah. Yep. So that's one way to abuse the current uh, meta on uh, mm -hmm. Archer Queen chambers. So, and in this case, um, building all the way a double wall like this around your queen, that's quite a big investment. It is so, fairly costly. I mean, yeah. I know I, when I've built bases, I've ran into issues just running out of walls right for everything else because because you <laughs> invested you invested so much into that queen chamber it is important but you got to find that balance of not only how many walls you use but how many defenses you use with her because um, yep. we can also tie this now into uh the next version of the outside um queen swap i guess we'll call it queen swap um uh, attacks uh, is dragons on top of it yeah um now you sort of defend in the same fashion as you would defend against an archer queen walk as a first step right because yes, you don't you, do. you don't want her range like if if the arch queen range went out here well you drop one dragon on on any of those uh collectors and immediately the dragons will just fly right in and kill her yes so so that's another important thing um a dragon has a range of about three tiles it's uh, probably a bit shorter, but this is what I read online. Okay. And um, that means, because the Archer Queen's range is just on top of the, these walls, that the dragons have to either kill the storages or in one way angle in like weirdly to get to the Queen. Yeah. So that's a way to defend against uh, dragon, uh, a dragon swap, as, as it's called. Now... One point I want to make about specifically about dragon swaps. I mean, I've played with some things. I've thrown a sweeper in there. I've thrown an air defense in there. I mean, I've done a few things where you're just focusing on trying to prevent the drag swap. I think I've come to the conclusion, and correct me if I'm wrong, that it's probably best to do your best to to almost force a drag swap with the slight chance that it might still go wrong. But not completely, you know, going all in to make sure that 
there's no drag swap. Like I don't believe throwing an air defense in there or a sweeper in there is is worth it in the long run. Would you agree? I think I agree. Yeah. The thing is, uh, if you do put the air defense in there, which is a valid strategy to defend defend against it. Um, Chief Lala from uh, Invicta actually show, showed that numerous times. He would just jump in with a cold-blooded, uh, spam a lot of wizards in there, even if there's a lava hound or a golem in the CC. Get the queen, get the air defense, and just wreck the base yep. with a cold-blooded, uh, cold-blooded Lalo. Yep, because you got to th- like one thing you have to think about attackers, right? The maximum kind of army comp for a town hall nine that could possibly come against you will either have a variation of, I look at it as five spaces to bring either Lava Hounds or Golems, right? Yeah. Because you got one in your clan castle, and then you get to bring four along with enough wizards for funneling, and either hogs or loons, kind of depending on what you do. Um, but uh, when you look at like a Shattered Lalo, right, it's two Golems, three Lava Hounds, uh, about six wizards and the rest balloons. Well, uh, you kind of break that down into other other variations. The reason you, the reason you do a shattered lalo is because your goal is to get two air defenses with the defensive queen, and then you bring three lava hounds for the remaining two air defenses. Right. Yes. So when someone has the ability to just go in with one golem, get the queen and an air defense, you're leaving them with four lava hounds for the remainder of of your of your air defense and a good attacker uh, someone who knows balloon placement and and is able to bring a few haste spells and a rage spell uh it's your base does not look good against when when the guy i guess what i'm trying to say is when the guy is able to bring one more lava hound then you have air defenses you could be in big trouble unless unless your base is set up very well uh, outside of that right so when thinking about a drag swap, well, yeah, you could just throw an air defense right there. And he's not going to swap you with dragons, but he, like you said, he's just going to come in with one golem <laughs> and his king and take that stuff out anyways and then just 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 air the rest of the base. So if you can, uh, the way I look at it is the Archer Queen herself is an air defense, right? She's an air defense on crack, as I like to say. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> So what other, uh, other than really watching watching where your Archer Queen range is, what do you suggest people do um, to help just kind of deter, I guess, uh, drag swaps? Um, first of all, making the funneling hard, uh, which in this case, I haven't tried to do too much. Um, for example, I could place an Archer Tower over here which would make a, a minion uh, right there really hard. That's one of the reasons why I placed that Tesla over there. Yep. So funneling is a huge part about dragons. I mean, they're predictable, but to up to a certain level. They will just target the closest building, and if that closest building, for example, is this gold storage after taking out that elixir storage, they might go to the elixir stor- uh, storage and then go to the cannon, which would completely kill your raid because the Archer Queen is alive. So when defending against, against dragons, uh, try to make the funneling hard, um, make them doubt themselves uh, whether the dragons will make it to the Queen and at least force a rage spell or something like that. I was just going to say that. If you can force on top of the two dragons, if not three dragons, I've seen three dragons work before, mind you, but if you could force two two dragons with a raid spell, I think that's a pretty large investment. And and on top of it, leaving at least some room for error that it might not exactly go as planned. Because like you said, I mean, dragons are predictable, but... They can be harsh at times. <laughs> I mean, there's no... If you drop the dragon kind of on right here, and you don't funnel off that guy right there there's no guarantee i would say that he's going to go right to that tesla he could just go there and then depending on how the rest of the base is set up you might have him walking down the side instead of going into your arch queen right so you're also forced to waste some space on funneling them yeah exactly right so i i like that like that's what i do i'm a huge fan of teslas around your arch queen chamber i'm not necessarily a huge fan of all four teslas being there um, I think 
two Teslas together, this is just kind of a personal opinion, um, two Teslas together do huge damage. So in this instance here, like if you had another Tesla there and someone tried to drag swap you, well, it's going to take a little bit it, before it even gets into the Archer Queen range, right? So if it you dropped a drag here and funneled this off and it went onto that gold storage, there's a pretty good chance, like, those Archer Towers are going to be shooting at it. Two Teslas are going to be shooting at it. There's a good chance that first drag's even dead before the Archer Queen aggros. I think they both would die before the Queen would, in that case. Oh, what did I do here? <laughs> All right, sorry. Screwed up the twiddle for one second there. <laughs> um... So, yeah, I mean, like, to me, I'm a huge, like, in every Arch Queen chamber I now build, I put two Archer Towers and two Teslas. And then I, I like, as well, I'm a big fan of, um, get these shapes back, uh, having a crossbow kind of in the back. Uh, not necessarily specifically for dragons, but at the same time, you, you want it, you're trying to discourage all three of those outside swap techniques, we'll call them. Uh, whether it's dragons or uh, an arch queen walk or a uh, king swap, right? And I say king swap fairly loosely because I don't just mean your king, like a king with a golem and a few wizards kind of thing for funneling. Um, if there's a crossbow behind her, there's a couple arch towers, some Teslas pop up, right? It The guy's going to have to have pretty beefy heroes or uh, have a little bit of luck on his side to make sure that he gets he, he achieves his goal, right? Yep. Um, I'm an, also a big fan of your wizard tower placement. I don't even know necessarily exactly where the range is, but I have a feeling it's right on the outside of those walls somewhere. On this edge, it is. It's around the wall. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you drop, right? The, the, if you think about dropping a golem in, the golem's going to walk over that cannon. And then you try and drop some wall breakers in there. Well, there's not only the small bombs on the outside of the wall, but that whiz tire is going to get a shot off um, at the wall breakers coming in if they don't pay attention and to the ranges. maybe take out one or two, yes. Right. That's so, another reason to have a Tesla over there, because uh, it will pop and maybe uh, kill a, a wall breaker. Yep. Yeah, so there's little things. I mean, you didn't... Like, this queen chamber, right? So you've spent... What is it? Two, four, basically five defenses um, and proper sizing and a fair amount of high storage buildings. Um, and like, you know, like this whole section isn't complete, right? You would you would kind of continue on the chain of a funnel, right? So you're going to have to create a pretty large funnel now with either minions or wizards. You know, you try and drop a minion here. And that Tesla is going to take it out probably, even if it doesn't, like you said, like I think here would be a great, I know if I was building, I'd probably put an archer tower right there or, or something. Um, and it's going to just prevent, uh, prevent easy, easy funneling, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, you just want to make it as tricky and as difficult and as discouraging as possible for the attacker to say, okay, well, I'm just going to come in here, drop a giant, drop a jump and drop my king and then see you later, queen. Right. Yep. You want to force them to come for, from the other side, basically. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't get discouraged, too, guys. Like, like I think about it. If you spent forty troop space plus a raid spell just to do a drag swap, and they do get your queen, I think that's still a success in itself because that's a that's a pretty large investment. They're still gonna have to have a pretty solid attack plan for the rest of the base to get the three star. Right. Oh, they will have to know exactly what they want to get from the other side of the base before that big of an inve investment usually is worth is it. Is worth it. Exactly. Exactly. So um, if you're forcing a guy to think that deep and to be like, okay, if I can get some funneling troops on a couple of those outer collectors and drop a couple dragons and then they're going to go from here to there to the queen, that's... <laughs> You're having some success with your queen chamber, guys. So don't don't think that you're gonna completely stop these. Your goal is to find the balance of exactly how many defenses and how many buildings and how much space you need to create for your queen there to just deter it as much as possible. 
and allow you the rest of your base to to still be very developed and very tricky and complex so that if even if he does get that queen he's still going to have to have a very solid plan going into the rest of the base um to three star you right yep basically beautiful so one other thing i'd like to point out is now like i had said this um where's my draw thing uh now that you know you have you basically have this wall here that's protecting the rest of your base because of the distance that this wall is from everything um you're completely forcing the attacker to start making some choices like bringing a drag swap like bringing an archer queen walk and now guys if you're not you know a top in a top war clan excuse me uh if you're not in a top level war clan some of these a lot of these attackers aren't going to be confident with those with those decisions so uh, they, they don't they're left with very few options because you know someone watches some videos about how to do a shattered goho a very basic shattered goho well the first and foremost thought is okay well he's got to get the queen right so he's just going to try and jump and come straight in at you but the investment he's made leaves such a uh, to get what he gets leaves such a huge section left of your base that that is, that's not going to work on this base there's there's no way even without the defenses in there like you can just tell if someone came in from 12 o'clock to just get that top queen chamber with two golems a kill squad i just don't see it um so really what you're doing is forcing the attacker to come from from a different angle um with some sort of double jump do a drag swap do something funky he can't just come at your base with two golems and a skill squad get some bombs get your queen get the cc and then leave your base crippled um one one of the statements which i'm gonna continue through these series saying is you have to give up the least for the most so essentially you're leaving the attacker with a decision okay well i don't get a lot i do get the queen i do get a crossbow a tesla a couple archer towers but that's not enough to just hog the base after that that's not enough you know bringing two golems like i had just mentioned is not gonna leave you enough lava hounds to deal with four air defense on the back end it's not i can tell you that right now you know like leaving double giant bombs or bombs like this you're forcing you know you have three heal areas right now with these bombs and you're already forcing the guy to at least use a jump uh, and some wall breakers and golems just to get your queen. So some some things to think about, guys, is is where you're putting your queen chamber. The whole purpose of an offset queen is to make your attacker uh, make some decisions, right? Uh, so once once you would do a cleanup on this base, knowing where that double giant bomb is, knowing where some of these traps are um you're gonna have to you're gonna have to figure something else out right whether it's whether it's a double jump from that bottom section um but i liked where you put this double giant bomb specifically because there is no possible way other than double jumping to get that double giant bomb eliminated uh and get the queen at the same time right and that was a big piece of what we talked about in the introductory video about giving up the least for the most right you want your bombs offset from your queen um, you want the attacker to, to have to decide well how is he going to get your queen and how is he going to eliminate traps at the same time so his back end uh, uh, defense targeting troops are safe right yep um yeah so one like, last thing i would want to say is um wall breakers and compartments yep uh in this case there's a really clear example around the archer queen um every single wall has at least two uh, spaces so yes. even if you were to wall breaker in there uh the next compartment would not be opened and um you can play around with that so sometimes you can uh, choose like over here in the south um to not do that and force attackers to open two compartments at once instead of just one or yep. the other way around uh, make it as hard as possible to open different compartments 
Yep. Uh, that's the last way for me that I play around with uh, compartments to make it as hard as possible for people to, to come up with a good plan. Yep. You're pushing, I mean, essentially you're just pushing those walls out by two, knowing that the wall breaker is only going to open the one compartment, but you got to use that to your advantage. Because like you said, there's times when you might want a king, you know, if say if the wall went out here and you broke that wall, well, now you're opening up uh, this compartment as well. I mean, maybe a bad example, but if your king kind of took a hike, you know, you, if you if you wanted your king to go into that compartment and he wandered over here, that could really screw up your raid. So as a defender, when you're setting up those little wall, the little wall juts, I'll call them, uh, think about stuff like that, right? If a kill squad's coming in there, do you want them to have access to, to multiple compartments or just the one? If you just want them to have access to the one compartment, the two wall, two walls out from every corner will prevent that. But again, that doesn't always that isn't always the case uh, when you're building a base. Sometimes you want to throw in that confusion a little bit and and have a, a potential king go for a little walk once he gets into the base. Because everyone talks about you know creating your funnel on the outside, but well, what happens to a king when he goes on the inside? If he has a bit of a stretch to get to the queen. And you can have it so that wall breakers open up more than the attacker wants. That could be a big screw up for an attacker. I know what's happened to me myself. So, absolutely. It's happened to me too. Yep. Yeah. You're like, no. Why is he walking that way? <laughs> like, it's very strange. Like, sometimes you worry about not having enough wall breakers because of a fail. But sometimes I've had too many wall breakers. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'll bring. If you brought five wall breakers. Oh man, it's bad. If you brought six wall breakers and you blew up, let me clear some of this stuff here. <clears throat> and just say you, you blew up that wall. Well, is that, that, that will actually be a good example. Um, <laughs> trying to think of a an example in this base. It's hard to say, but if you blew up, I blew you know you blow up that wall, and then the remainder of three wall breakers continue on and blow up this wall as well. <laughs> And then you send your units in here and something yanks them down into that chamber. Well, probably you were trying to go for that queen chamber, not down to there, right? So, and then your king's just going to start bouncing off of the buildings in the chamber you didn't want him in in the first place, right? Um, it's kind of a poor example, but um, I hope, uh, hopefully they, uh, you guys get the gist of, of what I'm saying here. So, um, so yeah, guys, uh, let's just give a quick summary here about what we talked about. Um, the major, major points here. First of all, start with your Archer Queen Chamber, guys. You can start with all your walls, but you have to have an idea of which chamber is going to be your Archer Queen Chamber. Um, from there, you need to make sure wherever you place her in that chamber, you need three spaces to every wall. Now, you don't necessarily need three spaces to every wall, but you need to be conscious of if she's not three spaces from a wall, she will hop over that wall. So if the, if the queen was a little bit closer to say here and you know she's going to hop in here, that's fine. But when you're building the base, you need to recognize that and you need to you need to make that call. If she was back and she hopped into this chamber, well, that's not good because now you can just come from six, jump over into this chamber and you're going to get the queen, right? But as you're building a base, you might be okay with that. Now, let me also say, um, like uh, as part of that, the nine spaces that we talked about between, say, these walls and these walls, that... It, that's the number to prevent earthquakes or jumps, but that doesn't mean every one of your compartments needs to be nine spaces, right? You just need to make sure that the spaces, um, your the nine spaces of compartment are preventing uh, an attacker coming from an odd angle and just jumping right over into access into having access to your queen. All right? Does that that's, does that make sense? When I said that, yep, it does. Um, That's exactly right, the thing you need to prevent. Because there is no possible way, as we've pointed out, that you could come from the basically this bottom half. Uh, you know everything, everything down here. You can't come from that that direction with just some wall breakers and a jump and get access to the queen. It is impossible. So you, again, 
your whole goal with your chamber sizing is to force some decision making. It's to force some uh, something more elaborate than just going in with a couple golems and a bunch of uh, you know a bunch of wizards and and hogs and taking out important structures, taking out the queen, taking out the CC and hogging the rest of your base. Like that's you got to be thinking about that. So I mean, you could technically have uh, these bottom chambers any size you really wanted them to be, right? because your core chambers are the right size. Really what, what you do with this bottom section of base, it does matter, right? It, well, it does, but it, for sizing wise of the chambers, it doesn't really matter. I mean, uh, yeah, it's nice to have them a large size because you're gonna force a double jump or you're gonna force a wall breaker and a jump. Um, but you have some options, right? I, I just wanted to make it very clear that all of your chambers do not have to be nine, but definitely I would say your core chambers have to be nine, otherwise you're gonna get earthquake, right? Like you do not want one earthquake to open up all these air defense, right? And this base is absolutely perfect for that because no earthquake's gonna do that. Um, on top of it, no earthquake's gonna open up the air defenses and your queen. So some things to think about guys when you're when you're putting down those walls, count the nine spaces don't just put down walls count the spaces up get your core set get your queen chamber set kind of get some buildings down and you can play with it it's going to be a frustrating challenge at first let me make let me make that very clear too uh this doesn't just happen overnight um but uh, as you practice this it will become easier and it will be more clear uh, of exactly the goals you're trying to accomplish when you're when you're uh, dealing with your chamber and compartment sizing so um do you have anything else to add here kev i think that's everything about the archer queen okay yeah it's beautiful like like you said giving her as much attention as she can because uh you know how those women are sorry jen if you're watching this video but <laughs> you definitely get the most attention in 2.0 so <laughs> um well uh that should about do it for this little section of video guys leave your comments please for cat and i uh we're gonna continue on with these if you have any questions about sizing or about any other uh, uh any ideas you might have for us um to to come out with in further base building videos please leave it in the comments i do read every comment cad reads every comment um so we're really just trying to trying to break this down into bit by bit the important steps to base building um and eventually grow this into some more advanced base building techniques so i uh, hope you guys are enjoying this stuff for now cad i appreciate you coming out once again here you're welcome yeah 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 so uh we should be back here next week um i believe uh we're gonna have a pathing episode uh ready for you here um hopefully by next weekend uh but for now i think that does it for us uh that's just uh your wisdom from wiser trying to help you guys beg the next three star and until then we're out